hearing and doing the words of Jesus in the broadest sense is obeying the Bible. Jesus is the Word of God. Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, in the beginning was the Word. Jesus is the Word of God. However, if you want to get to the bullseye, that certainly includes building your house on the rock is doing everything the Bible says. But it's more specifically doing the things that Jesus specifically said. That would be a good place to start, wouldn't you agree? And if you want to get right on the bullseye, it would be doing the things that he just told them to do in the context of Luke 6. So let's look at that. Because I was kind of surprised to discover, in fact, I made a little list for you because I do truly love you. Here they come, five common Christian sand castles. Number one is in verse 35. It's also in verse 27, but I say to you, love your enemies. Then he talks about that. And again in verse 35, Luke 6, 35, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward be great, and you be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So, how's that going? How's that going? Loving your enemies. What's my enemy? Your enemy is the person who wishes you harm. Your enemy is the person who's crying when you're doing good. Your enemy is the person who, given the opportunity, would keep you from the promotion, keep you from the success, keep you from the recognition, keep you from the opportunity. That's your enemy. That's your enemy. Got any enemies? Jesus commands me to love my enemies and tells me that I am loving him when I do it. Second one, verse 36, be merciful. Be merciful even as your Father in heaven is merciful. What does it mean to be merciful? What's that? Merciful, what's that? Grace is giving people what they don't deserve. Mercy is not giving people what they do deserve. If you ever hear yourself saying, she deserves that, he deserves that, they had it coming. In that moment, you are not obeying the commands of Jesus and you are not loving him. It's right here. Three more common Christian sandcastles. Don't judge, verse 37. Judge not and you'll not be judged. Judging means passing a verdict. Not on a person's actions. He's going to go on to say, by their fruits you'll know them. But passing a verdict on a person's heart. If you ever say, I know why she's doing that. Oops, you're not God. I know why he's like that. I know why she said that. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. You don't know why. You can't see people's hearts. Get off God's property. Only God, man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. When I'm judging people, I'm building my house in the sand, I'm not obeying his command, and I am not loving him. I just didn't want to go any further than verse 36, there was, or verse 37, there's so much here. Love your enemies, be merciful, don't judge, don't condemn, don't condemn. Judging is giving a verdict. Condemning is passing sentence. That's beginning to punish the person. My silence, that's what you get. My avoidance, that's what you get. My rejection, that's what you get. Now you're condemning. You're actually carrying out a sentence against another person, failing in the final thing here at the end of verse 37. Forgive, forgive, forgive and you will be forgiven. Release a person from the obligation that resulted when they injured you. Now, everybody look up here. 
Jesus' commands are for my good. Right? Choose to sin, choose to suffer. Every time God says don't, he means don't hurt yourself. All that he commands, he commands to bless me. This is what's so awesome about loving Jesus. I got to say, like, I got a few things that I feel like my wife does for me that I'm very thankful for, but I don't think I could honestly say that they're for her. I think they're for me, and I hope there's a compensation in that I'm also doing some things for her. But wouldn't you agree in relationship? Don't you do some things for other people that you wouldn't prefer to do, but you just do it because you love them? Guess what Jesus asks us to do that we wouldn't prefer to do? If we rightly understand it, nothing. This is the awesome thing about his perfect love. Everything he asked me to do is shock her for my good, for my good. All that he commends, he commends for my protection and blessing and joy. All that he forbids, he forbids for my protection and greater happiness in the long run. How awesome is that? Now let's just test that. Let's go back down through our sandcastles. Is loving my enemies really for my good? Well, why don't you just take some time over the weekend as it remains and study the effects of bitterness and unforgiveness on the human condition? It's like acid on your health. Be merciful. Don't judge. Here's the part that blows my mind. Every single one of these commands from Jesus is relational. It's finally time for Jesus to surface his wants, and every single one of them isn't for him. It's for us. You know what I want? I want you all to get along. You know what I want? I want you to be good to everybody. You know what I want? Did you see me praying in the garden, sweating great drops of blood? You didn't see that? I was praying for your unity. What I want is for you to be good to each other and to everyone. That's my big want. And of course, this is everywhere in Scripture. So note this, loved ones, and I am back now to John 14. Putting Jesus wants above my own is loving him.